Hey guys, Dr. Dominic Sportelli here, medical doc and board certified in both adult and child and adolescent psychiatry by the American Board of Neurology and Psychiatry. Here I am just continuing with, with part two of alcohol withdrawal and what happens in the brain and what happens neurologically, a really, really important topic because of how dangerous it is. So if you haven't seen part one, check out part one, which is a very basic overview of what happens neurologically and in the brain when you drink alcohol chronically. So take a quick review of that and then come back to this. To continue here, we're gonna get into what the brain actually does to compensate for those things that we talked about in part one. So in part one, remember, super quick overview, is that alcohol binds to GABA receptors, specifically GABA-A, and it inhibits neuronal transmission by a chloride ion influx, negatively charging the inside of the neuron and not allowing for what's called an action potential. Now that happens in certain areas of the brain, specifically the cerebellum, which is our balance area, prefrontal cortex, which is our decision-making and impulse control area, as well as our brain stem, which is our breathing and some of our very, very important vital functions. When that happens, our brain is always trying to maintain something called homeostasis. Homeostasis is basically a fancy word for balance. It's just trying to maintain balance. So when you drink alcohol every day for weeks or months or even longer, and you're inhibiting that neurotransmission by activating GABA and slowing things down, your brain does a couple of things. It says, whoa, I gotta really kind of balance this out. So what it actually does is quite fascinating. One thing that it does is it down-regulates the expression of GABA receptors. So it makes less GABA receptors available for the alcohol or the ethanol to bind to. So it's saying, okay, we're gonna give less breaks to this system here, we're at less ability to slow down because we're being slowed down so much. The other thing that it's gonna do it's gonna upregulate the excitatory neurotransmission of your brain. And the way that it does that is increase expression for what's called NMDA receptors. NMDA receptors are excitatory neurotransmitters that work through glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Two things it's very basically doing is getting rid of some of the breaks and then upregulating some of the increased activity for your brain. Again, trying to balance that out. But here's the important thing. When you stop drinking alcohol, so now you're abstinent from alcohol, you're going to experience a very significant and dangerous withdrawal. And think about this for a second. Is your brain slowed down the brakes and increased its excitatory propensity? So now you take away the alcohol that was binding to those brakes, which is all that you had at that point, and now you have no brakes and now you're super, super excited. Brain starts to work a lot with those excitatory neurotransmitters, specifically glutamate, which is excitotoxic to your brain, and it doesn't have the ability to slow that down with GABA because it downregulated those GABA receptors. What ends up happening in this case is very, very dangerous, and that's what leads to seizures, because GABA suppresses seizures, so you get seizures, which could be really dangerous. There's something called status epilepticus, which means that you have a seizure that we can't break, we can't stop as hard as we try, which is very, very dangerous. And then the other thing that happens is, within the first 12 hours or so, you can have what's called alcoholic hallucinosis, where you see things and hear things that aren't there. Sometimes people have perceptual disturbance where they actually have tactile hallucinations. They feel things on them, they see things. I recently had a patient that saw water dripping from his ceiling, bugs in the house, uh, rats, mice. I had patients that see people. And then if that progresses and you continue to not drink and abstain from alcohol, the brain goes into something called delirium tremens. You've probably heard that term. And basically this hyper excitable state with all of this glutamate neurotoxicity causes visual hallucinations, significant confusion. You don't know where you are. You don't know what's going on. You're very, very confused. Your sensorium is completely disrupted. Memory is out the window. Uh, you can become agitated and, and just really, really, really sick. That combined with a very dangerous process of hyper excitable sympathetic nervous system. And that means your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up and you experience all these physical sequelae of withdrawal. That's why that happens. Hopefully you understand that. It makes a little bit more sense to you. So how do we treat it? And when somebody comes into a detox facility or a medical hospital for alcohol withdrawal, we take it very, very seriously because the mortality rate for untreated delirium tremens, once it progresses to that point, is up to 30%, believe it or not. So we have to intervene very quickly and very seriously. One method is, and there's multiple methods to do this, 
One method is to bind those GABA receptors with something that dissipates slower and that we can control with a taper. See, alcohol is very unpredictable in the sense it has a very, very short half-life. So it's very hard to taper somebody off alcohol using alcohol. So what we have to do is use something that binds to that GABA receptor and that we can control that taper very cautiously and carefully. And that's why we would do a taper of something like Librium or chlorodize epoxide, which is a very long acting benzodiazepine, or we can use something like Ativan or Lorazepam, which is a longer acting benzodiazepine as well, not as long as chlorodize epoxide, but still something that we can control over the course of days to get you away from this dangerous withdrawal. That's alcohol withdrawal in a nutshell. Uh, again, you guys got a pretty quick crash course in the neurology and the neuroscience of alcohol intoxication, the upregulation and downregulation of those neurotransmitter systems, specifically GABA and glutamate, and then how we treat that and why it's so dangerous. So now you guys know a little bit more and uh, definitely leave comments below and, and definitely inquire about other topics that you want me to discuss and I'm happy to do so.